and welcome. My name is Alan, and we are back with more snuffing there. Okay. <laughs> We're here with a video, another video from Robert Wright. And today we are looking at a video from him. Uh, it's called We Are in a Second Gilded Age. It is something I have discussed for quite a while here. And I mention it often. We are in a second Gilded Age. And here's agreement from one of the top people when you talk about economics. Just further proof that, yeah, we're right back to the Gilded Age. But uh, let's, let's get into this. Ultra-wealthy elites, political corruption, vast inequality. These problems are not new. In the late 1800s, they dominated the country during America's first Gilded Age. We overcame these abuses back then. And we can do it again. Come on. Yep. The Gilded Age was not a good time in American history. Um, yeah, so much disproportionate uh, distribution of wealth. Most of the wealth was owned by the rich. You know, it's ridiculous and honestly we're almost right back at that point Mark Twain coined the moniker the Gilded Age in his 1873 novel to describe the era in American history characterized by corruption and inequality that was masked by a thin layer of prosperity for a select few yeah quite Literally, the idea of something being gilded. So, something's just basic underneath, but, oh, it looks so pretty because it's got this sheen of gold. So, there's so much wealth in the country. But the majority of it's owned by just a small percentage. Thus, why it was called the Gilded Age. Yes, it did look pretty. The country was full of wealth. But, you know, it's like anything else. Because not everybody had access to it. The majority of it is in the hands of a few people. Thus, Gilded Age. The end of the 19th century and start of the 20th century marked a time of great invention. Bustling railroads telephones, motion pictures, electricity, automobiles, which changed American life forever. But it was also an era of giant monopolies. Oil, railroad, steel, finance, run by a small group. Yeah, these are the big names of the Gilded Age. Andrew Carnegie, um, which I believe was Well, they don't have them in order under what they actually ran, it doesn't look like. But, yeah, Andrew Carnegie was still uh, Vanderbilt Railroads. Rockefeller was oil. I don't know who Cook was. That name I'm not as familiar with when it comes to these robber barons. J.P. Morgan, banking, finance. So, yeah. Oil to uh, Rockefeller, railroads to Vanderbilt, steel to Carnegie, and finance to Morgan. So I wonder what Cook was a baron of. Interesting. Anyway, let's continue this. Group of men who had grown rich beyond anything America had ever seen. 
They were known as robber barons because they ran competitors out of business, exploited workers, charged customers exorbitant prices, and lived like royalty as a result. Money consumed politics. Robber barons and their lackeys donated bundles of cash to any lawmaker willing to do bidding on their behalf. And when lobbying wasn't enough, the powerful turned to bribery. Result but, 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 but isn't that just a form of lobbying in itself? Yeah. Uh. In some of the most infamous political scandals in American history. The gap between the rich and poor in America reached astronomical levels. Look, Look at that. The one, top 1% on 51% of all wealth in 1890. Think about that. That means 49% went to the other 99% of the country. Yeah. Very much like it is today. You know, the, you can draw very noticeable similarities. Large numbers of Americans lived in squalor. Anti-immigrant sentiment raged, leading to the... Yeah, you notice, again, that's something else. Always, when people are feeling the economic pinch, something that's often used to take their attention off of it, is blame this immigrant. You know, they're here to take your jobs. They're here to take your lifestyle. When in all honesty, no, that's not the truth the enactment of racist laws to restrict immigration and voter suppression largely aimed at black men who had recently won the right to vote was rampant. We even have voter suppression laws today in attempts to kind of cut down on the ability of uh, everyone to have a fair and equal vote because you often hear don't you want clean election rolls and proper voter identification? Those are actually part of the laws. You just want to further restrict people. The era was also marked by dangerous working conditions. Children, often as young as 10 years old, but sometimes younger, work brutal hours in sweatshops. And again, we're actually seeing some lawmakers try to push for the age of working consent to be lowered. <sighs> Again, like I said, you see so many similarities between then and now. Workers trying to organize labor unions were attacked, sometimes killed. It seemed as if... Yeah, you, this kind of stuff happens in some of the more red states. It's not near as common as it was back in the original Gilded Age, but it still happens. If American capitalism was out of control and American democracy couldn't do anything about it because it was bought and paid for by the rich. But Americans were fed up and they demanded reform. Many took to the streets in protest. Investigative journalists, often called muckrakers then. Yep, muckrakers, because the rich didn't like the fact they were pulling up all the information. But hey, we've got to get the truth out there. Helped amplify their cries by exposing what was occurring throughout the country. Famous novel, The Jungle, by Upton Sinclair. It's about the conditions in the meat packing factories during the time and expose the fact of <laughs> it isn't just the type of meat that you would well, that it says it is that are ne that is necessarily in there cuz yeah they would talk about loss of fingers 
or things like rats ending up in it, dead rats, and just being ground with it. Yeah. It led to a lot of regulations. See, this is why I keep pushing regulations. There wasn't regulations before, and what happened? Some of the sickest junk. Oh, but that's free market. Shut the hell up. And a new generation of political leaders rose to end the abuses. Politicians like Teddy Roosevelt, who warned that a small class of enormously wealthy and economically powerful men who... Yep, Teddy Roosevelt, speak softly and carry a big stick. Essentially, notifying about his trust, what he called his trust busting stick. He was proclaimed to be the great trust buster, the, 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 the one who would break down all these giant uh, monopolies and trusts. So, yeah. Although, to be fair, it was his replacement and vice president, William Howard Taft, who ended up actually busting up more trust in a shorter period of time. So, But Teddy Roosevelt started the process. Whose chief object is to hold and increase their power could destroy American democracy. After becoming president in 1901, Roosevelt used the Sherman Antitrust Act to break up dozens of powerful corporations. Yeah, drawing of Teddy Roosevelt putting the vice to squeeze out the money out of these big trusts. Seeking to limit the vast fortunes that were creating a new American aristocracy, Congress enacted a progressive income tax through the 16th Amendment as well as two wealth taxes. The first wealth tax in 1916 was the estate tax. Which to this day, Republicans have dwindled and dwindled and dwindled till it's nowhere near what it originally was. A lot of them, they've almost gotten rid of it completely. Which is so ridiculous. A tax on the wealth of someone accumulated during their lifetime, paid by the heirs who inherited it. The second tax on wealth, enacted in 1922, was a capital gains tax, a tax on the increased value of assets paid when those assets were sold. The reformers of the Gilded Age also stopped corporations from directly giving money to politicians or political candidates. And then, Teddy Roosevelt's fifth cousin, you may have heard it, Franklin Delano Roosevelt led us through the 1930s and World War II. Of him, continued the work through his New Deal programs, creating Social Security, unemployment insurance, a 40-hour work week, and requiring that employers bargain in. Yeah, FDR. While not all the programs lasted, he kept trying to do things to provide strength to the regular population because he understood the country wouldn't survive if the only ones who had power were the wealthy. So, Social Security, still around today. Unemployment insurance, still something that's available. 40-hour work week, which is supposed to be the standard, but a lot of companies don't even want to get you up to that point because they don't want to pay you overtime. And then bargain with unions in good faith. Good faith with labor unions. But following the death of FDR and the end of World War II, when America was building the largest middle class the world had ever seen, we seemed to forget about the abuses of the Gilded Age. Now, more than a century later, America has entered a second Gilded Age. It's also a time of extraordinary invention, and a time when monopolies are taking over vast swaths of the economy. 
So we must bring new antitrust enforcement to bust up powerful companies. Now another generation of robber barons is... Yeah, instead of Vanderbilts, Rockefellers, and Carnegies, and Morgans, it's Musk, Bezos, <laughs> what's his name, Facebook, Zuckerberg. I'm like, what is his name? I could not remember. Accumulating unprecedented money and power. So once again, we must tax these exorbitant fortunes. Wealthy individuals and big corporations are once again paying off lawmakers, sending them billions to conduct their political campaigns, even give... Yep. Yep. We're right back to, hey, let me give you a billion or so. I know I can't donate that explicitly to your campaign, but I could use it to run ads in your favor. <sighs> or I could do it to pay for something else that may help you. And we even have the Supreme Court, which is supposed to be an arbiter of... Um, equality, equal choice, not just partisan dumb assery, they're being bribed. We're finding this all coming to light. Giving luxurious gifts to Supreme... Yep. Harlan Crow Clarence Thomas. It's so stupid. He should be removed, period. We have found so much he was unwilling to disclose. And he still sat on those cases, even though it was then a conflict of interest issue. He is corrupt and needs to be removed. In court justices. So we need to protect our democracy from big money just as we did before. Voter suppression runs rampant in the states, as during the first Gilded Age, making it harder for people of color to participate in what's left of our democracy. So it's once again critical to defend and expand voting rights. Working people are once again being exploited and abused. Child labor is returning. Unions are busted. The poor are again living in unhealthy conditions. Homelessness is on the rise, and the gap between the ultra-rich and everyone else is nearly as large as in the first Gilded Age. So, once again, we need to protect the rights of workers to organize, invest in social safety nets, and revive guardrails to protect against the abuse. Yep, regulate, regulate, regulate. My God, you know, you always hear the Free market capitalists are like, regulations are evil. No, they protect the average American and allow, don't allow you to be so fucking rapacious on the country. You know, if we don't regulate, you get to take and take and take and take and take. Which I know is what you want. It's more in your fucking favor. But it hurts everybody else. So that's why we need regulations. This is a great wealth and power. The question now is the same as it was at the start of the 20th century. Will we fight for an economy and a democracy that works for all rather than the few? We've done it before. We can and must do it again. Well, yeah. I think he puts it fairly succinctly showing, yeah, we are in a second Guild Age, which I have said over and over. We're right back to where he was at the end of the 1800s and early 1900s.
And it took someone like Teddy Roosevelt, and even later, uh, Taft. I can't remember the full thing. I, Howard Taft. I'm wanting to say Richard, but I know that's not right. Anyway. Taft and Roosevelt did so much to break these companies down. Some of them still exist. Uh, Standard Oil, owned by Rockefeller, became what is today Exxon. So, yeah. Some of these companies have long, long histories. Uh, J.P. Morgan, who was like the big baron of uh, banking and trusts. There's still a bank named J.P. Morgan. So yeah, and of course Vanderbilt, who was one of the big heads of the railroads, he's got a university named after him, Vanderbilt University. Uh. I don't know about modern equivalents, what the industries now are, but yeah. Many of these still existed. It's just, we're we're going through reruns of the same thing. This is why we need regulations. It's why we need competitiveness. And unfortunately, a lot of these companies are like, I'll agree not to get in your way if you don't get in mine. Okay, we can make money together. Yee! You know, we should have a push that any small businesses looking to make their way should get backing from the government. But you notice many of these mid-sized to large companies during the, what was it, the PPP or PPE loan thing during the pandemic, they still tried to abuse it. It's like, seriously, guys? And companies who are making all this money should not have a zero dollar debt when it comes to taxes. Some of them have been known to even get money back. That should not never ever happen. I know average Americans that have paid more than some of these giant corporations. It, that should never happen. Never! Period! But, we'll go ahead and end this episode here. As always, educate thyself. Th think, read, study, learn. Someone tells you something you have trouble believing, ask them to cite their sources. I'll be putting this 
link to this video in the description box below the video. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. <sighs> Until then. Later.